Kai, we see very clearly why you got involved with this issue. Um, but, uh, but Ellen, I kind of want to start with you in terms of um, we see the progress that's made, but what do you feel is, is one, what is keeping people from knowing about this, and what, is, what do you feel is the best tactic for people to engage on a local level to create that larger groundswell that we need to affect change on a state and then federal level? Well, the great news is you know, uh, Family Values at Work is a network in 25 states, and that may soon grow. And so all of these places have existing coalitions that people can plug into. The folks from Uncommon Goods are here. Can you wave wherever you are? Mm -hmm. And they did a terrific thing. Not only have they made good policies for their own staff, but they sent out a catalog to a million and a half people who shop for on their website and said why, Dave Velosky, the CEO, said why it matters so much to him that everybody have paid leave. And they made a map of our states so you can go and see what's happening in your state and how you can get involved or just get in touch with us to get started. So that's the great news. And uh, on our website, familyvaluesatwork.org, there's a booklet called Why I Became an Activist. Um, and, you, and you hear a typical story. People say, you know, this thing happened and it was really hard. And somebody came to me and said, we're doing something to change it. We want you to get involved. And they all start by saying, me? What could I do? And then they realize, what I have is my life experience. And that matters. And I can talk to my friends and neighbors, but also to legislators. Mm -hmm. And that's what, and then they all use words like, what an honor it is, and how proud their family members are of them for having become activists. And they also see that we're in it for the long haul, that this is about long-term transformation. Right. Well, I wanted to find a wide variety of stories, not just parents, um, but people dealing with an aging um, parent, I mean, yeah, an aging parent or a six or injured spouse. Um, and we actually followed, I think, maybe almost 20 people, 18 people that weren't in the film. And it was so hard to ch pick and choose, you know, but you have to in a way, and especially when it came to like, the variety of the different situations. Um, so really, it was just having a variety of characters um, showing all the different ways that paid leave matters in our country. Um, and yeah, and Christina was in particular <laughs> uh, special just because what a roller coaster. Yeah, and can you talk a little bit about sort of how you became involved and, and sort of what your hope was with, with being part of this project? Yeah, um, I actually, I work in um, visual effects and post-production, so I reached out to Kai after seeing um, an article in the Chicago Tribune just from a what can I do to help? What can my company that I currently work for do? Um, just on a professional level, I want to get this film made. It's so important. And then wrote a blurb about you know, my personal experience. Um, I was pregnant with Isabella at the time. Gotcha. It was after the loss, but during my pregnancy. Gotcha. So I definitely, you know, I just, I wanted to be involved. And then uh, we had dinner with her. Of course, she wrote back and was like, thank you so much. That's so generous, but I would love to meet you. So I went out with her and Alexis, the producer, to a dinner that has changed me and my husband's life, um, where they, they asked if we wanted to be subjects in the film. Um, you know, I was all for it. My husband's a very, um, it, it's hard for him to talk about. He's a very private person. Um, so um, after the dinner, I just expected him to say, you know, great opportunity, but I'm not comfortable with cameras being at our house and being there. And he just looked at me and said, we're doing this. Like, we have to do this. Um, and, you know, and Kai and Alexis, I. I they had this way of making, um, convincing us like how unique our story was from a, it, it deals with everything. It deals with bereavement loss mm -hmm. um, and losing a child, which there is no bereavement policy. You get one day, three days. Um, and when you lose a child, anyone in the room who's a parent, or it, it will destroy you. Um, and you need more than three days to grieve. Um, it deals with, um, you know, maternity leave and more importantly, paternity leave yeah. and, and, and how we undervalue fathers and, and overburd overburden mothers. And, and um, yeah, I'm very grateful that they convinced us to be a part of it. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, and yes. I do want to get to questions from the audience, but I do have a question for, uh, for Elizabeth. Um, Obviously, one of the m most important things I think, and, and it's, it's, I think Ellen says it in the film, it's just sort of sharing these stories, learning about people's experiences, Kai's experiences, everybody's experiences that are, that are part of the subject, are, are a huge part of it. How much, did, how much was New York affected by hearing these kinds of stories in, in terms of making that decision? Extremely. I actually, um, when we were negotiating paid family leave, I was part of like the person in the background negotiating at the table. 
And Blue, who's one of our advocates, first of all, I just have to say thank you, Kai, for this film. Like, it means more than, you know, to the 20-something agencies that are doing this. And the advocates that are in this room without them. Um, I remember being at, um, sitting at a panel and Blue literally walking into my office and saying, I need you to meet someone. And I know that after meeting that mom who came with her daughter to Albany, walking into our offices very smoothly, the advocates are amazing, they know exactly where we are, um, that made so much of a difference because I was able to discuss that during the negotiations that I had just met this woman and the difference that it made in her life. So. Wonderful. Uh, I would love to open up to questions. I have more, of course, but I saw your hand first. Thank you so much for making this film. Um, one thing that um, just popped out for me and I was very curious about, um, like when in DC the folks who voted and then the folks who didn't vote it, I was like, who did not vote? <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of like where your husband worked and the what he had to deal with in the HR, I was like, what company does he work with? <laughs> I had all these questions about like who in the Sam Hell is against any of this. And I, my question is, was there, a, and also where you worked. <laughs> like, I was like, well, where did she work? Did she can't go back and like be able to have her, her, her th your due justice of having been there. Like, as you said, you feel like you were being punished. I was like, well, where did she work? <laughs> and I want to know, did, was there a conscious effort to exclude that? Because I feel like as we look at like you know more progressive companies that are thinking about how to m have much more progressive policies like where are these uh, you know how do we was there a conscious effort to exclude the names of these very archaic you know businesses and policies that's a great question and you know first of all i don't think any of these experiences are rare i think if you were to go talk to most parents um, probably if uh, any of the moms in the room, there's a bunch of people here actually wearing shirts with the number of weeks they got, uh, and there's a lot of zeros on them. Zero, zero, zero. I mean, it, this is not uncommon. So even though I'm glad that you're in your chair being like, this is effed up. I mean, it is, you know? Um, but on the same side, you, yeah, like with a lot of subjects, that was a big part of finding subjects and getting subjects on board is they didn't want to defame their company. They didn't want to lose their job. And my pri pri previous employer, I love so many of the people that work there. I love so many people in the upper management. I care deeply about them. Um, it was just that the, the core people who hired me ended up selling the business to someone else and they came in and like had like a, a whole different universe of thinking, you know, that was a little bit more corporate. And, but, you know, so I think for a lot of this film is subjects, I think, as a, for a documentary filmmaker, you have to make sure you protect your subjects, keep them safe, and keep them gainfully employed. <laughs> and for so many, I mean, and Brian included, they didn't want to lose their job. That was a big, big thing for Brian, a huge. And for all, everyone, and even Keisha, who was going to battling, you know, breast cancer on her lunch break, she wouldn't been at that same job for 19 years. But again, I told her, she's like, I can't lose my health care. I can't say exactly where I'm working. And so I think as a filmmaker, you make those negotiations all the time to protect your subject. You know, and the situation is there's a mix of people who could easily do this and won't, and many who want to and can't. And that's why the policy that we're fighting for, which is a social insurance fund, makes so much sense. And unfortunately, these lobbyists distort what it means and they say, oh, you're going to put this burden on small businesses. But like P uh, Pleasant Pop, the guy in DC that you heard, he said, thank you, this will let me do it, the Bright Start owner. This will let me do what I can't do on my own for my employees. And that's one of the reasons we're so excited about it. Great. Uh, yes, uh, other questions? Yes, please. Thank you so much. This is, was enlightening, infuriating. I work with Christina, and she's extremely brave to share her story with us. Thank you. What, what I'd like to do, and Ellen, I, I, this is a question for you. There are people in my, our company, and I, I manage the company for the US, 
who assume, like a lot of people do, oh, well, I get the time, right? So my question is, how do we get out the message and dispel the myth and let people know just what we aren't getting? So help us screen this film. Um, for right now, this is, you know, we're going to be arranging screenings. Uh, Kai has a great team that's working on this, working films. Family Values at Works coalitions are setting up screenings. Help us make that happen. You can help us by supporting it financially. You can help us by signing up to host a screening at zeroweeks.com or getting in touch with us. Um, that will help spread the word. And then hopefully at, after enough of those, it'll get picked up unless one of you is a major distributor in the audience, in which case come right up. Ellen, always working. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a quick, I mean, it's not a, I mean, I know you've thought about this already, but it seems to me sexism is a huge part of this, not to, dis, not to go against the idea that paternity leave is not important because it obviously is such a huge part, but it's also tied into this idea of women being overburdened and stuff. But this idea of sexism, I mean, it's a weird little stretch now, but with all of the activity going on now about sexual harassment, about gender equality within film and all other media, I mean, how, do you see a way of building a way of sort of coalescing all that together to bring more attention to these kinds of larger issues? Well, absolutely. And I mean, that's part of the work. What's interesting is a lot of the greatest think tanks that are helping fund really important work on the ground, the Gates Foundation, the Ford Foundation, the MacArthur Foundation, and many others, the, what's the um, conservative think tank, the AIE, so many people have been studying this and have found that paid leave is like the, literally the silver bullet for gender inequality and racial inequality. Mm -hmm. Because those are the people who, um, and low income inequality. I mean, there, it's just like, this, it's the one thing that can really help even the playing field. And as we saw with our Donkey Kong animation, it usually is women that are dropping out of the workforce because of just like old archaic ideas of what, that women take care of the caregiving and men earn the paycheck. And we all know that's not true. And our families have changed, our minds have changed, but the institutions around us haven't. And the thing that I always like to remind people is this isn't a new problem. From the time, from 8,000 years ago, people were like picking berries and hunting and taking care of their infirm and their newborn babies and their aging seniors. This is something as a society we should not be struggling this much with, you know? Well, especially since you point out so clearly it's yeah. a bipartisan issue as well. It it's is not bipartisan. not something that is on one side or the other. No. And it's really great to have Brian and Law's voices in the film. Because mm -hmm. one of the things Gloria Steinem always says, if women will never be equal outside the home until men are equal inside the home. The good news is that many, many, many men want to be, and if they just didn't get punished for it at work, yeah. and that's what we're trying to change. Great. So very, very far back. If you could just give like a very brief overview of what the New York law covers, when's it going into effect, to give us all a little background so that we're empowered to know our rights about it. Absolutely. Um, so f first, I just want to recognize uh, my senior policy advisor, Max. Stand up. Mm -hmm. This is Max That's Dubin. Max Durbin, yeah. um, and he's the only male on my team. So um, it's and he's like the guru for paid family leave. So it's amazing. I just wanted to take the time to recognize him. He's been working really hard. So our program, we have a website that is up. The best part about it is that it is an insurance product, so that's a little different from all the other states that currently have paid family leave. Um, part of it is because we wanted this to be something that could be replicated easily and that we didn't have you know, insurance companies or others saying that they can't do it. Um, so it's new. It was difficult to do, but it's amazing. The state hasn't done anything like this in approximately 100 years. We haven't implemented a program like this. The best part is, you know, it starts on January 1st, but you can start applying sort of now, which means you can actually download the applications on our website, find out from the insurance companies, uh, from your employer, who they're actually going to be, um, you know, who, what insurance company will provide the product. But literally, like, on January 1st, people can start taking the benefit. Um, you know, eight weeks, it phases in. 50% of your uh, your wages, it also phases in over the next four years, and we're hoping to make additional changes, but I won't discuss those now because we have to go into budget negotiations. And, and I'll, sh I'll point out, uh, at the conclusion of this Q&A, we will be showing a PSA that uh, explains a little bit more and shows us a little bit more. I just wanted to, and for the men, it's amazing. I've had so many men walk into my office, close the door, 
and ask me, so like eight weeks, what does that mean? Like she can take two and I can take two? I'm like, yeah, she can take eight and I can take eight at the same time differently. It's amazing, mm -hmm. so kudos to them. And is Dr. Dreyer in the room? Oh, I talked to Dr. Dreyer. He has an other thing he had to be at oh, last minute. So, so I just want to say that Dr. Bernard Dreyer, who you saw in the film, Madeline Villanueva, who's right here somewhere, thank you, um, Nancy Rankin, Donna Dolan, Sherry Lewin, lots of people in the audience are um, helping get the word out. And one thing in particular that we formed a partnership with Dr. Dreyer at Bellevue, and Madeline is helping to lead it, to make sure that the patients there in the prenatal process find out about their rights under this bill and know how to apply for it. And that's something that we hope will flourish and will be able to scale up and do in lots of other places. And it looks like you have materials, yeah. So if you- Are those our pamphlets? Awesome. Thank you, Madeline. Good Excellent. Uh, we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Uh, yes, in the very back. Yeah, so bonding is um, within the 12 months of the event, right? So if you had a child, it does cover children born in 2017, Fantastic. which is why you can start applying now. And on January 1st, you can have the day off and for the next eight weeks. I just want to say one thing before anyone else leaves. Um, I put my ring on this hand to remind me that Keisha, unfortunately, is not doing well. Her cancer has come back and we started a GoFundMe for her. If you go to our Facebook page, Family Values at Work Facebook page, there it was just reposted so that you could easily find it. If you want to contribute, we're creating paid leave for Keisha through a GoFundMe account, and we'd love to have you contribute. Thank you. And her GoFundMe is also on the Zero Weeks page, so you can find it either place. Great. Right here in the middle. Yes, uh, Ellen, can you tell us the cost of uh, screening this film and whether there's a budget to uh, actually make it available at no cost to large organizations, to law firms, to corporations. I can just take that. Go right. um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, people can uh, book a screening for an organization, for a library, for a business, for their corporation. And obviously, we never want um, budget to be an issue. So there's a screenings. Um, uh, link on the Zero Weeks website, just go to screenings, and then it gets you in touch with our team who books screenings. What's we that website? Uh, ZeroWeeks.com. <laughs> yeah, and it's great, because like I said, our illustrator Irene is here, and we had lots of conversations about wanting to kind of be a little tongue-in-cheek about it and showcase this kind of 1950s, you know, dad's going to work and mom's staying home with the baby with these stats that are absolutely awful and riveting and heart-wrenching just to show that this like perfect idea of American values, f especially from that era that we associate so much with like the perfect family and you know, leave it to Beaver, is totally not true and is, and is completely contrary to the actual picture of America, which I think is revealed through a lot of the statistics. So the um, kind of, uh, the satire was intentional. And one last question I have to ask, which is the current administration and uh, what their take on this issue is and what, what the challenges may be in the next few years. Thanks to the power of our movement, uh, most politicians are talking about paid leave. And a number of people who won on Tuesday talked about paid leave in their websites and in their speeches. But there, that doesn't mean that all solutions are the same. So unfortunately, we have had a proposal that would create too little time for too little, with too little money for too few people at the expense of other people hmm. by having it come from unemployment insurance, which is so low that nobody could really afford to take it, and by taking it away from other people who need unemployment. So that's not a workable solution, and the, it leaves it up to the states to decide what's a valid marriage and how do you know you're the dad and so on. Um, so we have, you know, we encourage you to support instead a policy that creates a social insurance fund that's sustainable that's self-generating, that covers, that values all families and all kinds of care. And one thing just to add to that too is, you know, there's, uh, you know, as we point out in the film, this really has become bi bipartisan. The majority of people in each party, the majority of independents, and like in the upper 70s and beyond support paid family medical leave. A lot of the debate is in how to do it. So, you know, I think what um, a lot of the work that Ellen's been helping states to do is to, to have employ us, employees, um, put money into their you know fund, and sometimes employers match it. And then some um, some of the uh, policies that have been written or like proposed 
uh, suggest that businesses get a tax break if they do it. And I think the worry there is that then we'll just do the same thing we're doing now. Some will choose to do it, some won't. A lot of people will be left out. It's just a boss lottery again, so. And one last question for me. Sorry, I just keep on yeah, thinking those. Yeah, let's keep going. Uh, like, you know, this issue, it's, it's, you know, I try to think about parallels to other issues which are more sort of legal based like gay marriage or something like that where there is something like a, a Supreme Court decision that can affect things. Right. But for this it seems a little different and is there some kind of a tipping point that you feel like if a certain number of states enact it then it's just inevitable that it will become a federal uh, policy? Yeah, he's good, that's right. Um, we hope. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what we're trying to do. There are, we, you saw we had, Kai had to add an epilogue of Washington State so there are now six places that have won. Um, and it went like this, six years from number one to number two, five years from number two to number three, three years to um, three and four, and then one year, we have a, two more, and there are four more on the cusp. And we think that will lead to a tipping point that will help change things in 18 and 20, put this squarely on the radar, people will say, um, this is what the public wants, this is what the voters wants, this is what we're going to do. Well, and one thing, just by the way, I, I thought this was so funny you said this. I was filming Ellen, it's not in the film, but I was at an event where I was filming Ellen, and I think it was Valerie Jarrett maybe, a speaker stood up and said, the, the, like, the roadmap for paid family leave is going to mimic marriage equality. We're going to win it in the states, we're going to get a critical mass of, you know, in the states, and eventually, like, the federal law will have to follow. Um, because truly, then it becomes, okay, you're in one state and you have this, right. and you know, it becomes a mess. So, Because um, as someone in this room, Anawadia said, we're building the movement, we're building the model, and we're building the momentum to make it inevitable. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That's a great way to end it. So thank you so much to all of you for being part of this.